Today, there are more than 200 ethnicities worldwide. But what if I told you that 60,000 years ago, there was just one? Known as the Cradle of Life, Africa was home to all Homo sapiens for thousands of years. But then, 60,000 years ago, something extraordinary happened. Millions of early humans began to leave their home, and within a few years, they would conquer the planet. So, why did we leave Africa? How did we manage to survive? And why did this migration happen not once, but twice? Weaving the complex evolutionary web that shapes humanity today. 50 to 70,000 years ago, our common ancestors, the Homo sapiens, began an unprecedented voyage across the world. Risking it all, they said goodbye to the nurturing African continent and set out to explore the vastness of the world. This expansion event was called Out of Africa II. Lasting tens of thousands of years, this expansion changed the fate of our species and reshaped our evolutionary story in more ways than one, directly leading to the world we see today. But why did our ancestors leave home? First appearing in East Africa around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago, the Homo sapiens, our common ancestor, were faced with a number of issues that led to their eventual exile from Africa. The major reason is still under debate, but one of the most likely reasons for the exile was the climatic conditions of the region at the time. Over its 550 million years of existence, Africa's climate has always been changing, influenced by things like how the Earth moves in space, affecting rain distribution and solar radiation distribution, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in the Earth's crust, Africa has always been an active continent. Sometimes, this was in positive ways, manifesting in periods with more rain, making the Sahara greener and providing an excess of food. Other times, the continent could be harsh, manifesting in periods of droughts, earthquakes from tectonic activities, and increased volcanic eruptions. This instability created two major reasons why Homo sapiens would have left their home. The first reason, facilitated by the phases known as African humid periods, was the migration of Homo sapiens due to expanding habitats, resource availability, and innovative adaptation that eased up their way of life. Characterized by increased rainfall and the greening of regions like the Sahara, this migration came from the need to expand due to issues like an increase in population pressure, the natural curiosity of humans, and social dynamics. The second reason was that the climatic conditions of Africa were less hospitable, as they were caused by periods of aridity and climatic instability. During these times, parts of Africa, including the Sahara Desert, would have been harsh and challenging environments to live in, and, as such, would have led to the migration of the inhabiting species. This migration would have been characterized by the struggle to find food and resources and the need to find a more suitable environment to adapt to. Regardless of the reason for their move, two things were clear. Our ancestors traveled out of the continent between 50,000 and 70,000 years ago and were the best equipped of all the species of humans to do so. This was thanks to several adaptations that by far made their move more possible and easy. While not as simple as hopping on a plane for a short 18-hour trip, Homo sapiens were bipedal, making them efficient walkers and runners. This, coupled with sweat glands for heat management, makes it easy to see how they traveled the world and why it took so much time. But it wasn't only about simply walking. See, advanced cognitive abilities came in clutch for the Homo sapiens as they enabled complex problem-solving and communication that were crucial for adapting to new environments. Technologically, the Homo sapiens also had an advantage as they developed sophisticated stone tools enhancing hunting and resource utilization. On a social level, they lived in cooperative groups, sharing knowledge and dividing labor, making even the most challenging tasks all that much easier. Importantly, the Homo sapiens had the use of fire on their side. Fire was one of the most important tools in their arsenal as it provided warmth, protection, and enabled cooking. It improved nutrition and supported their expansion into diverse landscapes across the globe. Equipped with all these, the Homo sapiens were ready to conquer the world. But how did they do it? About 10,000 years ago, 
humans had successfully populated most parts of the world, including Eurasia, Australia, and the Americas. This process was not a single, continuous migration, but rather occurred in multiple waves and stages, as human populations gradually spread across different continents. The oldest region of human expansion during the Out of Africa II events surprisingly led them to one of the furthest regions on the planet. Starting, of course, in Africa, the migration led them to the land of dangerous creatures, Australia, traveling through the Arabian Peninsula and making their way to the Indian subcontinent, humans soon ventured along the coastal regions of present-day Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and Burma. Approximately 50,000 years ago, Homo sapiens reached Australia, finishing a journey that likely involved traveling along coastal routes and using primitive watercraft, such as bamboo rafts, to navigate across the seas. The voyage to Australia was quite a feat, as it showed that our ancestors had seafaring capabilities that far back in history. However, some believe the discovery of Australia was an accident and could have been caused by some humans being swept by a storm and deposited on the continent. Regardless of how they got there, humans conquered Australia 50,000 years ago, surprisingly, before they conquered Europe. But why? Well, simply put, the Australian path was more favorable than venturing into Europe which was already inhabited by Neanderthals, who provided significant competition for resources. Not to mention, the coastal routes offered abundant resources and more hospitable climates compared to the colder, harsher European environment. Following Australia, the next regions to be conquered were China, Korea, and Japan. Following herds of grazing animals, Homo sapiens began migrating into southern China around 45,000 years ago. Initially, their movement was limited to southern regions due to the presence of icy glaciers in the north. Humans expanded further into northern China and Russia. By approximately 35,000 years ago, they had reached Korea and Japan and were now fully settled in the region. During the period of conquering northern and eastern Asia, Homo sapiens finally faced the Neanderthals once again as they faced Europe. Homo sapiens began their successful expansion into Europe around 45,000 years ago. As said before, earlier attempts to migrate to Europe had failed due to competition with Neanderthals, who had been living there for over 200,000 years and were well adapted to the environment. However, this time around, Homo sapiens had developed better tools, social structures, and strategies. They were ready to take Europe. The successful migration route led them from the Indian subcontinent through the Middle East and into Europe. And luckily this time, they were able to coexist and even interbreed with Neanderthals, which in the long run provided some genetic advantages. Today, it is believed that Homo sapiens genetically assimilated the Neanderthals, ultimately leading to their demise. This is evidenced by the fact that modern non-African humans carry about 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA. Once in Europe, Homo sapiens thrived, using their advanced tools, fire, and language skills to adapt to the new environment. They formed complex social groups and leveraged their ability to innovate, ultimately outdoing the competing Neanderthals, who went extinct around 40,000 years ago. This migration marked the beginning of Homo sapiens' dominance in Europe. After conquering Europe around 25,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began moving into what is now Russia. From there, they crossed the Bering Strait into North America, either via a land bridge exposed by lower sea levels or by coastal routes using boats. This journey continued southward through an ice-free corridor or along the western coast of Canada and the United States. By around 16,000 years ago, humans had reached Central America, and within another 2,000 years, they had spread to the southern tip of South America. This particular expansion was rather rapid and was likely that fast due to their experience with boats and their heightened ability to adapt to various environments. As you might have seen from the timeline of their trip around the world, Homo sapiens were very efficient in expanding, but were not the first hominins to leave Africa. So, who were the first to do so? And what happened to them? It's unclear who was the first to leave Africa, but it is very clear that we were not the first. One clear reason why is thanks to a Homo sapien woman from Southern Africa 
who lived between 170,000 and 200,000 years ago, named mitochondrial Eve. Besides being the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria play a crucial role in tracing DNA through maternal lineage due to their unique inheritance pattern. See, unlike nuclear DNA, which combines genetic material from both parents, mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, is inherited exclusively from the mother. This means that all individuals inherit their mtDNA from their mother without any contribution from their father. Because mtDNA is passed down unchanged from generation to generation with occasional mutations, it provides a direct line of genetic descent along the maternal line. And as such, it is a powerful tool for tracing ancestry and understanding evolutionary relationships over long periods of time. So, why is this important? Well, it's simple. Mitochondrial Eve is our universal grandmother. This is to say that all humans can trace their lineage directly to that one woman. Mitochondrial Eve is estimated to have lived in Africa around 170,000 to 200,000 years ago, indicating that she lived among a population of Homo sapiens who existed alongside other human species, like Neanderthals and possibly Denisovans. This simply means Homo sapiens were not the first humans in Africa, but rather one of several human species coexisting during that time. It also proves that the hominids they met in other regions were not simply evolved Homo sapiens, but rather evidence of earlier migrations out of Africa, whose lineages did not survive to the present day. The precise time when hominins began to leave Africa is widely debated today. However, one of the most crucial discoveries on the topic came from Damanisi, a town and archaeological site in the kvimo kartli region of Georgia, dating back approximately 1.78 to 1.85 million years. The Damanisi site offers some of the oldest human remains found outside of Africa. At the site, archaeologists unearthed five skulls and numerous other hominin bones, revealing a population of early humans with relatively small brains and simple older one-style tools. Shocking scientists, this hominin had a brain size of 610 to 775 cubic centimeters, which is about half the size of a modern human brain and a little bigger than that of earlier hominids such as Homo habilis and Australopithecus. This population of earlier hominids broke the conception that migration began with an increase in brain size. They also changed the consensus that they followed prey to those regions as they occupied Demanisi for around 80,000 years, showing an unexpected level of stability and adaptability. Despite these technological and anatomical limitations, these early pioneers managed to survive and thrive in Eurasia, hunting local species and adapting to diverse climates. However, they too might not be the first to have left Africa. Early hominins outside of Africa were also found in Asia, with the most significant being Homo erectus in China and Homo floresiensis in Indonesia. These two separate species provide fascinating insights into human evolution and migration, as they also break the narrative of when we first left home. In China, the Gongguangling cranium from Lanshan stands as the oldest confirmed human remains, dating back approximately 1.63 million years, putting the individual alive while the Dmanisi lived in Georgia but that isn't the oldest find from China, as stone tools found at another site suggest an even earlier hominin presence, dating to around 2.12 million years ago. This older one tool pointed to the presence of species like Homo habilis, which are similar to those found in Africa and in Flores. These tools were also found in Jordan, dating around 2.4 million years ago, a time period when the Australopithecus walked the earth. Today, some scientists believe these tools belong to them and that they made their way to parts of Jordan through Egypt. Meanwhile, on the Indonesian island of Flores, Homo floresiensis, discovered in 2003, presented a unique case with its small stature of about one meter tall and distinctive cranial capacity of 426 cubic centimeters. Initially debated, Homo floresiensis is now thought to be a distinct species that diverged from early Homo ancestors over 1.75 million years ago. But focusing on the migration from Africa by Homo floresiensis, much like the Domanisi population, proves that migration from Africa was not totally dependent on brain size. But that's not all. 
as in the lower Siwilak region near Chandigarh, India, at the site of Masol, archaeological excavations uncovered significant evidence dating back over 2.5 million years. This was a huge deal, as the site suggested early humans ventured into the Indian subcontinent much earlier than previously thought. Among the discoveries at Masol, researchers found fossilized bones bearing multiple cut marks, indicating butchery and scavenging activities by early humans who probably fed on animals killed by flooding in the area. These findings, coupled with stone tools found in nearby regions like Atirampakam in southern India, dating to around 1.5 million years ago, painted a vivid picture of early hominin activities in the region. Regardless of its time and reason, our exile from our home to conquer the Earth is by far one of the most important achievements of our species to date, shaping who we are today biologically, culturally, physiologically, and so much more. This expansion of the human race was an inevitable necessity. In our exploration of space and the oceans, our ancestors blazed a path for what it means to be human and what we can accomplish as a species. But what do you think about it all? When do you think we first left Africa? And what do you think the world would have been like if we didn't? Until next time, bye.